And welcome back to You Read John at 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student of uh, computer science at the University of Virginia. And today we're going to be kind of straying a little bit from the STEM, you know, core STEM stuff here, uh, and uh, kind of venturing into the broader uh, lessons that I learned uh, that were kind of invaluable uh, as a student that uh, had I known uh, this stuff before I started as a student, uh, I would have probably avoided a lot of trouble. Uh, and that is, of course, uh, about names and names of groups of people, uh, and in particular certain groups of people as we are going to be describing here. Uh, so as a general rule, uh, assuming what people call, or assuming that you know before you actually are told or have any information uh, to kind of be certain about it, uh, what people other than you call themselves isn't a good idea. Wait for a clue. Wait for them to tell you, uh, or, or by them calling themselves that thing, or some kind of outward display or sign that they give you. For example, uh, wearing, say, a British, you know, keep calm and drink tea sign with a little British flag, uh, or possibly a native pride baseball cap or something like that, it, a clue to kind of suggest that you are in fact dealing with someone of a particular group before you are sure in your mind that, you know, it is okay to call or say or suggest that they are part of that group. Uh, in particular, uh, the terms Indigenous Person, Aboriginal, First Peoples, Métis, Indian, Native, First Nations, or Native, or Native American, all of these are not interchangeable terms, and even in cases where they all are, where a couple of them apply, it is not always appropriate to use each individual term in all situations. So let's draw a diagram of this. As you can see, this is a very oh, I this, one. There we go. this is a really complex and tangled up Venn diagram. Go see the Venn diagram videos for more about them. Uh, but as you can see, there are a lot of kind of different places where these intersect, and a lot of places where these don't intersect. And any individual person could be in any of these spaces, uh, kind of intersections between different groups and categories, and. To a large extent, it is kind of up to them. To a large extent, it's up to where they come from and their cultural group and their background, their family, etc. Regardless, it's not a simple picture of kind of one group with one type of person in it. There are many different types of people that can be described by these particular terms. And so this is not something that you can just kind of walk into and get uh, off of a guess uh, first off the bat. Uh, so there, there's a difference between people with particular genes, particular memes, particular cultures, uh, people who have a line of descendants stretching back to those who inhabited uh, this continent, say 10,000 years ago, uh, etc. Now there are, so going down the list. Aboriginal and First Peoples are pretty close to interchangeable. Uh, they they are uh, the the kind of group or one kind of exception to all this, and that those two terms you can kind of use. If you could use one, you could use the other in pretty much any situation. Uh, another, I guess, point before we kind of get into defining the rest of these terms. Uh, generally, calling people by a group name isn't a good idea. Uh, in in general, uh, there are. Uh, 
for example, oh, I think over 100 First Nations in Canada alone. And it's a better thing to uh, be specific uh, rather than general when referring to someone if they are part of a group. Uh, and we'll get into the reasons why in a bit. Uh, but this might sound overly complex, and this might sound like, you know, you could probably just get away and gloss over it and ignore this, you know, kind of complicated situation. But it's, it's not, uh, I guess, overly complex. It's just the way it is. And you can think of it this way. There's a lot of people who can consider themselves Irish first, European second, British last. Uh, even though you'd think it would be kind of the other way around, where it would be kind of European, British, Irish. Because uh, that's kind of a system-wide view of that particular issue. And yet, you look what happens when people from Europe come to Ireland. People in Ireland freak out. Why? Because they have a very strong national identity. Likewise, depending which nation, culture, or person you're talking about, they may consider their membership in broader groups more or less uh, important or of more or less consequence. You know, even Canadian uh, may or may not be part of it at all. There are plenty of people in Canada who can, don't consider themselves as such, even though they may even be Canadian citizens. Um, you wouldn't go to, say, Central Asia uh, as someone from, say, Saskatchewan and expect to know the names of the peoples and cultures present. Uh, likewise, unless you know uh, which one you're dealing with, uh, don't expect that you know either in Saskatchewan or pretty much here in Ontario as well. Where it's a much bigger area, there are just as many different groups to, I, I guess, involved in, in play here uh, that are worth considering. So, uh, this is a quote. Um, Indigenous peoples is an all-encompassing term that includes Aboriginal or, fir or First Peoples of Canada and other countries. For example, the term Indigenous peoples is inclusive of in Inuit in Canada, Maori in New Zealand, Aborigines in Australia, and so on. Uh, unquote. So th this is a kind of group tied to the, the, the kind of basis of people who are here, uh, who started here uh, at a kind of family level, uh, at a kind of culture level, uh, a language level, uh, etc. Typically, there are genes involved that are shared, uh, whereas uh, on a, as a whole, among the world, uh, limited means are shared. Uh, so there is some sharing of culture between, say, the Maori and the Cree, uh, but it's not as strong as you might see other uh, cultures share uh, means. Uh, likewise, kind of going down the, the list of specificity, an Aboriginal person is someone who's roughly descended from people who would have been in Canada since before 1491, or more likely since before 970 AD. Uh, genes, again, are going to be involved, uh, and limited means are going to be involved, although to a greater extent than, say, common between Cree and Maori, uh, the you know, Danes and Cree will, will share a lot more common, a lot more history, a lot more cultural uh, parts as well. Uh, and you can save yourself a lot of hassle in political discussions by not mislabeling people uh, according to how they view themselves, whether First Nation or otherwise. If you call me an American, even though this is technically the content of America, I will probably not like you and not like you doing so. That would be kind of an insult to me. Uh, likewise, you know, calling someone the wrong term in this cat, you know, group of categories uh, is likely to offend them, to make them unhappy, and won't further your discussion with them in any way, shape, or form. This is especially true for groups that are kind of under the boot of an oppressor, culture, or nation. Confusing Jews with Nazis, Cherokees with Americans, or Armenians with Turks isn't just offensive, it takes part in erasing of the history of the smaller group. And many people in those smaller groups do not consent to their erasing of their history, and it's usually trivial to give them and their groups at least as much credit that they exist. Uh, the Harper government doesn't talk about it very much, but there are some people within the geographic region of Canada that have never integrated, and that's okay. Uh, Personally, I've never met uh, any of the you know, people directly involved, uh, but they do exist, and many are manning barricades, keeping the Canadian government out of their land and kind of away from their families and communities. And so this isn't necessarily a matter of great-grandfathers stealing land from each other. The Canadian government today still does not treat First Nations local to Canada's borders with enough respect to even negotiate with them. It just comes in and takes stuff from them. There is unceded land around Canada, and some land that was ceded under circumstances that was 
full well despicable, as you probably well know. And it's worth keeping that in mind when we're considering different groups that are involved in different discussions. Uh, America, as a boiling pot, kind of treats things a little bit differently. Uh, they kind of view things as between them and Native Americans, where the term Native has a slightly di different sense. It's, it's kind of attached to the concept of America. Uh, so kind of my background is uh, descended from Native Americans uh, in that sense. Going down the list, there are people who call themselves Native or Indian. Uh, in the same way that African American people sometimes use the N-word to describe themselves, uh, it may not be quite as offensive to refer to someone by one of those terms, but depending who you are, and depending who you're talking about, and two, it may or may not be inappropriate. Uh, this is pretty much equally true of getting the wrong category of any of these ca uh, descriptions, if you're, for example, pale face. The law in Canada, uh, i.e. the Indian Act, uses the term Indian in that pejorative sense. Uh, it's unfortunate, uh, but if you're going to use that term, uh, either use it because a person has dig or kind of designated themselves as an Indian, uh, or uh, use it in the strictly legal sense, uh, where it has meaning as a term of art in law, uh, as outlined by the Indian Act. Uh, I am not a lawyer, I don't pretend to know how to use it correctly in that sense, but if you're a lawyer, you have to use the terms that the law uses, unfortunately in this case, uh, but in, th in that case, you know, you're going to have to use it, that particular term. There's also a difference in how much power the person you're talking to has. Uh, if you're dealing with someone who is in an official capacity as an Aboriginal Relations Office uh, personnel, then that's a different thing than having, you know, a, just a chat with some random dude on a street corner uh, who may refer to himself as Indian or Native first rather than other terms he may be able to use. Again, you know, it's up to them what they choose to view themselves as, uh, just like it's up to me as, as far as what I choose to view myself as within a certain kind of level of constraint. Uh, again, native is a little bit of a pejorative or a slang term, uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean native to the land as much as a native, uh, so it refers to, you know, quote unquote race. Whereas uh, First Nations is a political entity, it's a political concept. It is roughly equivalent to a state or a country, uh, though oftentimes they do not have a monopoly of violence within their kind of borders or region. Uh, stemming from a lack of that, they may have an inability to enact certain kinds of policies. However, they are self-governing, more or less, uh, within Canada, uh, and whether or not the Canadian government acknowledges them as such or not. And by the way, this is of course the First Nations land that we are kind of broadcasting this uh, video from, uh, shared with the Canadian government by the Crown by virtue of treaties that the Canadian government or the Crown uh, signed with them, though they do not respect very much. Uh, our, as a more or less non-First Nations Canadians, right to be here depends on those treaties being upheld, uh, and it's worth noting that. Another thing to point out is that the idea of whenever a person or whatever a person considers themselves to be, or or the context of whatever they, they can be shown to be, uh, they are a person. And a lot of offensiveness of terms comes from removing personhood from a description. Uh, so there are a lot of kind of ways of describing people that can be a lot more offensive if you remove that person from it. So a pers person with you know dark skin is a black person, not a black. Uh, a special person is not a special, they are people, persons. Aboriginal person, not an Aboriginal. It, again, people may describe themselves as an Aboriginal, but if, again, if, if you have to use the term uh, and you're you know, worried about getting it right, add a person to that uh, to keep their personhood kind of respected in that. It doesn't always help, but usually it does. And this isn't just to be respectful, it's to be accurate. Uh, so even if you know you're not trying to be respectful about it, and you're not worrying about uh, whether or not you're you know communicating so that the other person you know, pays attention to you, although you probably should, uh, it's better to actually describe things in an accurate way than to just mess up and cause 
confusion, which is, of course, what we would like to avoid. I think I did. Oh, there we go. Um, next on the list is Métis uh, have their own culture and are realistically their own political entity, given the size and scope of a nation uh, in, and of them their own. Uh, they're probably closer to comparable to a diaspora of other particular ethnic groups. Uh, but again, they're uh, another kind of group that you can be a member of if you have the right background or whatever the, the requirement is. Uh, one place you shouldn't uh, get your definitions from, regardless which term you end up using, is the oppressor government, i.e. the Canadian government, or worse, the American government in particular, has a tendency of treating First Nations poorly, trying to erase their claims from history, murdering their leaders and covering up their murders, and then naming, naming and scope issues are historically a part of that. See the Indian Act as an example. Um, and so sometimes it depends on context, it, it, especially if you're dealing with people with complicated backgrounds. You know, if you've got English and free roots, it might or might not be relevant in any given conversation. But sometimes it is. It's kind of hard to describe what is and isn't a, an appropriate context. Uh, that's starting to get into the very broad and general terms. Uh, but it might, you know, when someone says extreme things like, quote, Indians should give up all their land claims and just suck it up, unquote, then someone who has a Cherokee background uh, may actually have a relevant thing to say against that, uh, whether or not even that same, you know, background may or may not be relevant in other uh, things and other groups. This kind of idea uh, is related to other videos as we've kind of described. Uh, it's related to the ad, hom bit, or ad hominem video. Uh, because I mentioned in that video that there are going to be some situations where character is relevant. Where who you are, uh, your background, is may not be the entirety of your character, uh, but it's part of who you are. Uh, and again, d depending what you accept, depending what you're kind of given, uh, depending what you decide to you know, be part of, uh, all these kind of matter and determine parts of your character. Uh, there are some parts that you're going to be able to define and change, some parts that you're not, uh, but again, it kind of all enters into it. And then on top of all of this, uh, there's also another topic, which is religion, uh, which roughly corresponds to cultural group, but doesn't necessarily. Uh, you shouldn't assume that everyone in Europe, for example, is the same kind of Christian. Similar, you shouldn't assume that all Ojibwe are of the same religion either. Uh, some nations may including First Nations, may have officially sanctioned religions, some might not. Some might have multiple, some might have strong beliefs, some might not. There's a lot of kind of variation and uh, difference between and inside of each, um, etc. So that, that's kind of like an entire different kettle of fish. Uh, and unfortunately, you'll pr you're probably watching this video from the perspective that culture itself First Nation or otherwise, uh, is stupid, and especially uh, culture that involves religion uh, is, you know, isn't worth thinking about it for, etc. Uh, but regardless of whether that is true or not, the closer that you can actually see the differences between people and their culture, between different groups and different kinds of cultures, the easier it might be to show which parts of the culture uh, are kind of not working or not valid for them, uh, and which ones are kind of safer left uh, for them to continue to form the identity of their members, uh, whether or not you like it or not. It's related to the Great White Combine video, because there's a lot of people who view the default as this kind of cookie-cutter white European-Canadian, and everything else is non-standard. Uh, and, and will allow only quote-unquote standard people to pass through their filters. This is a giant tragedy. Canada has a great number of cultures and peoples within its scope, and that is a strength, not a weakness. Uh, and we shouldn't design our structures and our institutions with a kind of narrow view of what Canada is and could be uh, in mind, because we're going to miss out if we try to do that. It's related to the ecological fallacy and the converse accident fallacy, the straw man and association fallacies to a smaller extent because human beings as individuals can vary a lot. Membership in a group only suggests things. There are always exceptions. Uh, and so keep that in mind in discussions uh, with and about groups such as these. Uh, and hopefully that will keep you from getting in trouble uh, to some extent at least. So again, regardless of 
who you are and what your background is. You know, try to respect other people, kind of go from there. If you have any questions about this, I will try to field them. I'm certainly not an expert, uh, but uh, I have lived in a good couple of places around different kinds of people, uh, so I have some ideas. Uh, and uh, there should be a kind of Bitcoin donation address here if you support uh, these kinds of videos. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one.